All right, well, uh, right now I am in Gettysburg and uh, for the past couple days been working uh, on some stuff at the Gettysburg Museum of History. Been staying right here at the Gettysburg Academy, which is an amazing historic building. If you ever come to Gettysburg, great place to stay. And uh, anyway, over the past few days, uh, as always when I'm at the museum, well, there's just like an insane amount of boxes and stuff like that that uh, have come in. So it, it's we can't do anything outside because you can see it's starting to rain on me. Uh, so we're going to walk a few blocks down, go to the museum, and uh, do a, another unboxing video. Okay, we're gonna do a, a, another one of our unboxing videos, and uh, I, I knew uh, JD was coming here, so I, I saved a couple items. We have items come in here all the time. You know, we're we're not only a museum; we also buy and sell items. So um, some of these items will be for the museum, and some of them will be for resale. So I have a couple of things put put aside here, and um, I'll get out my trusty Falschemjäger knife. I always recommend a Falschemjäger knife because they're extra sharp. And uh, we'll start with this one. It's pretty big. Um, I think I know what's in here, but um, sometimes there's some surprises. You know, guys contact me through email, send photos, and that's usually how it works. And I always encourage people to do that. If you have items that you want to sell or donate, please call us or send us an email. So this is not packed very well, but um, looks like first item we got here is a Luftwaffe overseas cap. Looks like it's it's got some markings inside. Uh, so we got some daggers. Oh dang. Army dagger here. It's got a mic maker mark on there. Pretty typical. Looks like a vet bring back type. And next we have a Luftwaffe with the sword hanger or the dagger hanger. Looks pretty decent. Um, blade's pretty nice on that one. Now, what's the difference between like a, a Luftwaffe and an army dagger if we're setting them side by side and looking at them? So, the eagle is different. This will have the Luftwaffe eagle. This is the army eagle. Luftwaffe also has this wire wrap on the handle, whereas the army one does not. And, you know, the ball on the top is a little different on the Luftwaffe. And, of course, the scabbard's different. It, it's, it's different. I mean, at, at first glance, they look very similar, but when you look at the detail, they're quite different. And, and, and this is a, what we call a second model Luftwaffe dagger. There's also the first model. And, and if I remember correctly, um, there may be one of those in here. So that'll be a good side by side. I'm going to move this out of the way because there's more stuff in here than I remembered. So there, here's a flag. Now, you know, we get flags all the time. Flags are one of the high demand items on the website. And, um, you know, German and Japanese flags are in high demand right now. So this is a pretty good one. It's got some reinforcement on it. Some people call these, uh, I believe this is a, what some people call a U-boat flag. Um, it's got a marking there. 100 by 170, that's centimeters. It's got the eagle mark here. It's got the, the rope, the suspension ropes here. And this style is printed on onto a single piece of cloth. Uh, most flags that you see will be multi-piece. They'll have a, a separate sewn swastika and usually the swastika is uh, uh, silk screened onto a separate piece. But this is all one piece and you, if you see the swastika is the correct way here and then it's in mirror image on this side. So it's um, a little different than some of them and, and a lot of collectors call these U-boat flags, whether they were really U-boats or not, I, I, I'm not sure. I think they're just um, a 
one that was used for general military use but again it's, it's got the reinforced edges so you could theoretically fly this on a boat or a vehicle um, and it wouldn't it wouldn't fray out as much you know this is designed that way so this is a pretty good flag um, it's got the maker mark here and um, yeah th th this is a pretty decent flag the, this will go for a little bit more than a an average flag so that's a good piece um, so next up we have a Japanese flyer helmet made made out of leather it's in excellent condition it's got the star right here the fur inside and the ear flaps mm -hmm. boy that's about as mint as they come Great piece. It's got some writing here. Maybe we can do some Google Translate later and try to see. It's probably a size or a maker, I believe. Neat piece. Nice variety here. <clears throat> um, ah, here's a Japanese hat. What? Holy cow, man. That's also pretty mint. Wow. Yeah, it's big, too. Ooh. Oh, yeah. There is a first model in here. So this is what I was talking about earlier. This is a first model Luftwaffe dagger. They used these early on. Let me move the army one. And um, it has its own hanger. It's got a maker mark there. And it's got the leather leatherette um, scabbard. And boy, this one's really nice. Yeah. A lot of times these <clears throat> we'll lose a lot of the the uh, coating and um, a lot of times this leather grip will get worn and uh, this one's in really good shape but again this is this is the first model this is the second model the Flopper. It looks like we got a couple more army daggers here here's another army dagger with the hanger a lot like the other one. Tight in there. But, you know, daggers are one another very popular item on the website and they usually go as soon as we list them. So if you ever are in the market for one of these and you see us list one, um, don't think about it just buy it because literally they and, and I'm, I'm not saying that as a sales thing but they, they just don't last very long at all um, they tend to go right away they're in very high demand right now and uh, here's yet yet another army dagger again in pretty decent shape So whenever I get a package from Germany, I, I, I always get excited, you know. Uh, I have some pickers that work for me over there, and I have some vendors over there that I buy from. And I'm pretty sure I know what this is because it's so small, but get out the handy Falschermager knife. We'll cut into this thing. Let's see. one's really packed tight so bear with me all right got some nice German newspaper there it's always fun to check out and uh, yeah yeah I, I'm, I'm I'm sure I know what this is this is um, some German silver coins now that may not be as exciting as a dagger but um, it, it, th these are some of the most popular items on our website. We sell a lot of these. These are Third Reich era coins and they're packed very well. <laughs> um, there's a lot of them here, but I'm just gonna pull a couple out. So these silver coins were made just before the war up until I think 1939. Um, I, I believe they were produced in 1937, 38, and 39. And uh, they have Hindenburg on the head side, and then it has a Nazi eagle on the tail side. 
and they're a little bigger than a standard American quarter, um, but they're two marks, and um, they're, they're made out of 0.625 silver, so they're considered silver coins. And uh, we sell them on our website. Um, I can't remember what the exact price is. They do fluctuate depending on the silver market a little bit, but they're under $25. And, and it's, it's a nice way to get um, a genuine Third Reich item that is silver. It has um, the silver value as well. And we sell these all the time. I, I would say these may be, besides maybe Civil War bullets, these may be our, our best seller. Okay, so this next one is, is uh, came in really recently, and um, it's a bunch of German stuff. And again, this is probably going to be mostly stuff that we sell on the website, so we'll check it out. Um, hopefully I can get this open. It's like a lot of tape. I covered up the name because I don't want people uh, getting my picker's names or my collector's names. Ooh, not much part packing material in here. So, it uh, looks like we got some armbands here. And again, you know, besides the flags, armbands are one of those things that just sell like crazy on our website. We have an NSDAP regular armband here. Um, here's a, another one. This one's sewn in the back. And this is an SA d Defense. And this one, this one has the uh, RZM tag still attached inside, which is pretty neat. RZM was a quality control and it had the manufacturing code in there for the manufacturer. So there's some good armbands, which we need more of always. Um, let me open this. Wow, this is a lot of belt buckles. Holy smokes. Yeah. So we have a Luftwaffe here. It's got a push in the face, but. Um, the maker is unfortunately cut off a little bit there. But that's the early style aluminum. Um, here's another one that does not have the tabs still attached. And here's the slightly later style in steel, Lufapa. And here's yet another one. So here are some army ones. Now this is this is almost like Luftwaffe gray, so this could perhaps be um, uh, Kriegsmarine, coastal artillery, but it could also be a, a late war army. They also used them, I believe. Here's an earlier style with the face. Um, it's multiple, two pieces there. Slightly uh, earlier style. Um, and then here, here are some of the even earlier style, the, the aluminum ones. They stopped making them out of aluminum. I, I, I can't remember what year. It was like maybe 1940 or 41. They started going to the steel. But this one has the tab on it. And um, you can kind of see the maker a little bit there. <clears throat> and here's yet another one with the maker on it in aluminum, the early style. And here is another one. What we got here. <clears throat> so this is a World War One. It's got the crown on it instead of the Nazi eagle. Has the same motto on it. Got mit uns. God is with us. And this is an unusual style here. Um, this I believe is post-war, possibly. So um, just just by the way that's made, it. it you know, you know the the veterans continued to march in parades, and you know they had they had veterans organizations. So I believe this is post World War One, but pre World War Two. So this would have been maybe for the Stahlhelm or one of the other um, German uh, veterans organizations. Um, very unusual um, making or uh, ma manufacturing technique on that one. So let's see, we got some more bags of stuff in here. Let's see, we got some metals in their packaging so um, this is how they would come you know when you would get them they, they'd be in these uh, these uh, cases these little sleeves and this is the war merit metal 1939 and this is the war merit metal um, or war merit cross excuse me with swords and see, this this was never the ribbon was never placed on that metal. 
So in its original packaging there, kind of neat. And this is uh, the, the West Wall metal. Is that correct? Yep. And this looks like the um, War Merit Cross second class with no swords. Yeah, okay, so this, again, the, the ribbon was never placed on there. It's got a nice long ribbon and um, it's still in the wrapper, which is pretty cool. Just the way it came from the factory, whoops. So those are, those are pretty neat. It's, it's neat to see stuff the way it originally came out, you know, in, in its original packaging from, from the factory. This is from, looks like, uh, Deschler. And here's another bag of badges. A lot of stuff in Good here. Grief. So we got a campaign shield here with the paper backing. Pretty nice one. And I don't know about that ribbon. Feels a little funky, but there's a, a Eastern Front medal. And another War Merit Cross second class with swords. And that's the zinc version. They made them, originally they made them in, in um, bronze or tomac um, but later on they started making them out of zinc and they would coat them with the silver I mean the gold uh, wash and That would come off. So a lot of times they look like this. So this is a little more early than this one And we've got some infantry assaults. So this looks like a bronze. Yeah, wow So this is the bronze version of the infantry assault badge and this is the silver version of the infantry assault badge so the silver is for infantry guys that you know that would um, be in a in an assault. The bronze ones were for guys that were not necessarily infantry, but they were involved, like maybe like uh, recon and and some of those other guys that were still doing combat stuff. But it was not um, the the typical infantry badge, but they still qualified for it because they were doing assaults. Here is a Panzer assault badge with nice with the. Um, the hollow back that gives it that real 3D look, and that's a Panzer assault badge in silver. Same thing, it's for the combat assaults, but this is for Panzer troops, tank troops. And here is another, looks like the ribbon's off of this. This is another War Merit Cross, second class with swords. And yet another one, and, and again, you can kind of see this one zinc, and the, it has some of the wash left. You can kind of see that goldish look. Um, and here's one where it's completely come off. So that's, that's the problem with the zinc, you know, the, the, the wash did wear off and they're, they're almost always like that. And here's another infantry assault badge in silver. The catch is broken on that one, unfortunately. So here are a couple of um, SA sports badges in bronze. And those are a pre-war award mostly. I mean, they, they, you see them in the 30s. You see a lot of the early SS guys wearing them too. They were awarded to both SA and SS members because in the beginning SS was part of the SA and then it kind of broke off to, to its own entity. But it, it was a sports badge basically and, and they'd have to do certain things to qualify for that. And, um, you know, again, it's one of those early badges and, and it, it is in the bronze or tomac and... Um, and they, they have numbering on them and the maker and everything on the back, I believe. You can see that kind of, um, at least the maker. Let me see if I can open that. Sometimes these are, the catch will bend on there. But yeah, it's got the maker in there that you can see. Here is yet another sports kind of award. This is the DLR version of the sports badge. And again, it, it, it's in bronze or tone back and it, it has the maker on the back also. I'll show one up, one on the back. 
And we have some wound badges here. Here's some wound badges in black in various condition. What well, that one's really nice. This one's got some paint coming off of it. Um, and here's the same award in silver. So there's different grades. There's the, the black, the silver, and the gold. And this is the 1938 um, Annex medal from when they uh, did the Annex. And that, that was a campaign medal, you know, people who participated in, in, in that event. And there's just another um, ribbon that would go with this War Merit Cross with Swords. And here's a nice um, political cap eagle, the uh, model 1939 version. Um, that replaced the model 1934 version that was smaller. Um, so again, you know, I bought this collection and um, we sell the stuff on our website. If, if you have items like that, this, please contact us. You know, we, we, we're always buying, we're always looking for more items. And, and if you want to buy an item like this, if you always wanted some German items and, and you didn't know where to go, you know, go to our website, gettysburgmuseumofhistory.com. Uh, we, we vet everything, you know, we look at everything like you saw me as I was looking at this, I was like, hmm, that feels weird. I'm going to have to look at this ribbon a little closer because I'm not sure if it's not an authentic ribbon, I'm not going to sell it, you know. Uh, we guarantee everything and, um, you know, you, we're, we're one of the trusted sources for this kind of material. So uh, check out our website.